I this morning is going to be a relatively short video. Um, this is an old Rayovac workhorse uh, camping lantern. Uh, it uses two six volt lantern batteries. I forgot to bring them out to show you, so I'll just put a picture here. And what I've done is um, I've converted this to run off of 18650 lithium ion batteries. And the main reason I did that is that I only use this thing a couple times a year. Uh, for about a week out of the year, maybe two, I use it for camping and then any other time it would be in the event of a power outage. And the problem with this is you buy the lantern batteries and while they do have a relatively long shelf life, I have gone several years without using this and you go to turn it on and the batteries are dead. They, they just died. Um, so you have to go out and buy new batteries and I can get these 18650 batteries pretty much for free. Just pull them out of old uh, laptops. Uh, you can buy them, but uh, the ones you get out of the laptops work pretty good. Um, so, uh, this is a fluorescent light. Like I said, it runs off of 12 volts, two 6 volt lantern batteries in series and the conversion was relatively simple um, you had to look I had to figure out where oh and this thing cost $20 in 1988 I had to figure out where uh, the voltage came in and positive is this strip here a negative is this piece here. Uh, the switch is these two contacts. And initially I had this, I was using the built-in switch, but I thought that there was a problem with the switch, that it was getting intermittent contact, because after you'd run this for a while it would just uh, stop working, it, or it would flash on and off, and I thought it maybe it was the, the switch was flaky or whatever uh, so I wired this other switch um, however I, I found out that that wasn't actually the issue and I could take this out and go back to this switch but I like that this is a solid switch this thing is, is just obnoxious uh, this is a low voltage alarm set to oh I should have uh, double checked that uh, whatever 2.6 times 3 is so that would be 6 7 it's about 8 volts um, while this thing gets 12 volts I found that the ideal or the minimum voltage is around 10.5. If once you get above 10.5 volts, there's no change in brightness. It just uh, it's the same. Once you get below that, around 10.3 volts, it's the brightness starts to go down. I don't remember what voltage it, it finally fails at. Uh, probably around six volts maybe but I can't discharge these batteries any lower than uh, I think it's 2.5 volts per cell so I set it to around 2.6 2.7 I my testing has shown that with these batteries which are approximately 2800 milliamps that the 
Um, the, uh, if you were to use it for about an hour a day, uh, it would last about four, uh, four, four hours, fifteen minutes. Half an hour a day, it would probably last around five. Um, oh, the other thing I did was, so I used these standard AC adapter plugs. I've got the male here, the females on here. It provides power and also power to the light. This sensor, this voltage monitor, does not get power unless this is, the light's turned on. So it doesn't check the battery when the switch is off. And uh, that's by design because when this isn't in use, it's not going to have batteries in it. Whereas before, with the lantern batteries, it always had uh, battery or batteries in it. And this here is a resettable fuse. It's a 1.33 amp resettable fuse, but it actually will engage at about three quarters of an amp. Um, it's just mainly there to, if this thing somehow, sh the batteries were to short circuit or any of the circuitry would short circuit, this would uh, hopefully keep everything from bursting in the flames. So there is some Velcro on the back of this. The Velcro fits in here. And plugs in like this. The uh, and then uh, there's more than enough room in here to store. Oh, probably another, you know, with some padding, probably about 12 more batteries. And, heck, if you wired the batteries in parallel and series, you could probably get a total, you know, this thing could run for days and days, but, you know, for what I'm going to use it for, that's all I need. Um, this, uh, it has a setting here where you can have the light come out 360 degrees or have it all reflected in one direction. So here's, you turn it on, um, turn it off. And that's it. I mean, it works. Um, it's not super bright. Uh, someone I know suggested I I could convert this to LED, and I would love to. The problem with LEDs, though, is that I can't figure out how to get this apart. The uh, it seems to be snapped together, and uh, my attempts to open it just seem to damage it and then the rest of it is all glued. Uh, the other problem with LEDs is depending on how many you put in here, yeah, it would be really bright, but it would use a whole lot more elect uh, electricity. Um, one of the cob lights I've got would use 800 milliamps as opposed to this, and as this is used, as the voltage drops, the amperage draw goes down. So it starts out about 500 milliamps max. Doesn't ever seem to go that any higher. And then it drops down to about 380 milliamps just before the alarm goes off. Uh, plus this is a softer light and if you're camping, you don't want a harsh glare if you're trying to just, you know, just get some light before you go to bed. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, um, This, the, the cause for the intermittent uh, light was not the switch. Uh, it was actually that inside, in here, 
you remove these four screws as a circuit board. You have to remove three screws and unsolder three wires and then I had to reflow all the solder on the circuit board. There were some cold solder joints. Yeah, once I did that it, uh, uh, it hasn't flickered once and it's been working fine ever since. Um, so yeah, there you have it.